When you factorize an expression, it has the effect of reducing the number of terms that that expression has. So when we want to reduce the number of terms in an expression, we can do it in one of two ways. We can either factorize that expression if there are common factors, or if there are like terms, we can add the like terms in an expression and it has the same effect as factorizing it. So whenever you factorize, and especially when you move on to the next topic in algebra, which is to simplify fractions, it's very important that you bear those two things in mind. So I've started off number one with an example that can be looked at in one of two ways. If we look at it from the point of view of adding like terms, so for example, if you have a look at these two terms, you have a 3a into an a plus 4 and a 2a into an a plus 4. Remember that a like term has exactly the same algebraic components as, it, as another term that's like. So if you look here, both of these terms have got an a and an a plus 4, an a and an a plus 4. So you can actually reduce the number of terms here or factorize it simply by adding the like terms together. 3 plus 2 is 5. How what have you got? You've got 5a, a plus 4s. Okay, so that is um, one of the ways that you can tackle number one. That's the simplest way. Another way that you can do it is if you have a look at that bracket, the a plus 4, you could say, if you're looking at these two terms, that the a, a plus 4 part of both terms is a like term. So it's if you take it out as a highest common factor, so we can say a, a plus 4 is a highest common factor, what have we got left with? We've got left with a 3 plus a 2, and 3 plus 2 is 5, and 5 times a, a plus 4 is 5a, a plus 4. So it gives you exactly the same answer. In number two, we cannot add these two things together because they are unlike terms. So our only option at reducing the number of terms here is to see if we could factorize it in order to reduce the number of terms. And now we need to be a little bit cautious because x minus 1 and 1 minus x are not the same kind of term. So we cannot say at the moment that those are a highest common factor. But if we do a little bit of reorganizing, let's just have a look at 1 minus x. If we swap them around, remember that that's a positive 1 minus x. So if we switch the terms around, we get negative x plus 1. And if I want to, I could take out a negative 1 as a common factor to x negative x plus 1. Negative 1 has to be times by positive x to give you negative x. And negative 1 has to be times by negative 1 to give you positive 1. So do you see that by taking out a common factor of negative 1, it actually helps you to swap those two terms around, okay? And that will then create that uh, highest common factor that we need. So negative 2x times x minus 1. I'm going to take out negative 1 as a highest common factor, and then I can switch the x and the 1 around to make it x minus 1. So that gives us negative 2x times x minus 1. Positive 1 times negative 1 is just negative 1 into x minus 1. If you now look at your two terms, there's the first term and there's the second term. The common factor, the thing that's the same in both of those terms, is the x minus 1. So we can take that out as a highest common factor, and we are then left with negative 2x minus 1 in this second bracket and we have now factorized that expression. In your homework book are two examples for you to try, so please pause the video and try those two sums. All right, number one, we have two terms in this expression. There's the first term and there's the second term. We can see that the thing that is the same in both of the terms is the m plus 4, so we can take m plus 4 out as a common factor. In order to get back to this first term here, we would have to times m plus 4 times 1. Please don't forget to put that 1 back in. And we would need to times m plus 4 by 2m to get back to 2m times m plus 4. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky because now the thing that's common is a whole bracket. But it's exactly the same principle. Take the bracket out as the common factor, new bracket, and then what must we multiply the terms by in order to get back to the original expression. 
In number two, we can see that y minus 2 could potentially be a common bracket, but in order to make that work, we first need to take out a common factor of minus 1 so that we can switch the 2 and the y around. So that gives us 3y times y minus 2, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Now that our brackets are the same, we can take out y minus 2 as a common factor. We would have to times y minus 2 by 3y to get that first term, and we would have to times it by positive 2 to get the second term.